Now before I can give you an overview of the PowerPoint 2016 program, I gotta open it up first. And to do that, I added a shortcut to that program on my desktop as well as down below on the taskbar. It's right there, see? Hover over it, PowerPoint 2016. If you want to learn how to add those shortcuts to the desktop and the taskbar, you can watch my Windows training video on shortcuts. In any case, a single click down below here to open it up or a double click here. And you can see when I hover over the shortcut on the desktop, I get a pop-up that tells me the purpose of the program, which is to design and deliver beautiful presentations with ease and confidence. Ooh, I'm sold on that confidence. Let's go ahead and double click to open it up. Now when you open it up, if you don't get this, well, start out slide here, the title slide, and you get what's called a startup screen, you'll want to watch my next training video on customizing the environment, because in there I show you how you can turn that on or off. I keep it off because I want to start right with the title slide here and go from there, and not have that startup screen asking me if I want to start with the blank presentation, which normally I do, so that's why I turned it off. In any case, watch the next training video on that, here, I want to start up at the top and give you an overview of everything you see here, going from left to right, then top to bottom. So in the upper left-hand corner, you have what's called the Quick Access Toolbar. It's called that because you can quickly access any command on it in a single click. And the commands that I have on it are, hover over it, save, and you can see in the pop-up, you got the shortcut keys, Control-S, it's the same as clicking on that button. Then you have the undo, and then you have the repeat and a few others here that we'll cover in a later training video. And then over in the middle, you've got what's called the title bar. It's the title of your file, your presentation. And when you open it up, a blank presentation to begin with, it gives you a generic name, Presentation 1, which when you save your presentation for the first time, it'll force Save As and give you the opportunity to change that and not have it some generic Presentation 1 because, I mean, what's that? And you can give it whatever name you want that's, well, pertinent to what you're covering in your presentation and then also wherever you want to save it on your computer and then you got a dash and the name of the program in case if you forget hey we're in PowerPoint and then over to the right you can sign in if you want to connect to the cloud and then you got the other options like ribbon display options we'll cover later and then you've got the window option to minimize this down to the taskbar so you can see your desktop restore the window down and close out of it and then below that you have what's called the ribbon. Now up here on the quick access toolbar you have a bunch of commands. Well, not many, but you can add a lot more. But down below on the ribbon you got a lot of commands. But because there's so many commands it doesn't stack them all onto one tab. If it did, well the ribbon would come all the way down. Ooh, quite a ways here. So what it did is it broke them up onto different tabs. Like all the popular commands in PowerPoint are on the home tab. If you want to insert something, well go to the insert tab and then if you want to design, set transitions in between your slides if you want the slide to be pushed wipe split animations ooh that's fun if you want to animate some objects or text or you want to start your presentation from the beginning from the current slide or if you want to do a review like adding some comments deleting comments or you want to change the views and here's your presentation views you have got your normal outline slide sorter notes page and reading and then well you got an extra here if you got adobe here acrobat and then you have what's called the contextual tabs, meaning that when you're working on an object, a shape, or maybe smart art, and you select something down below and you get an extra pop-up tab, that's what's called the contextual tab. It relates to the, in this case, as I was talking about, objects that I'm working on. That'll have special commands that are proprietary in working with the object, or the shape, or the smart art. And then you have what's called the file tab. Now when you click on that, it wipes everything from what's called the front stage and takes you to the backstage view. In the backstage, you can set up your environment or control the environment of your PowerPoint program. Like down below, you can get some options here that we'll cover later on. You can also print, share it with others, save it, save as. Pretty much things that you do after you design or before you design your presentation. Because when it comes to designing it, well, you want to go back to the front stage to design it. Now, on these tabs, you have what are called groups. You can see you've got a bunch of commands here, but it's sectioned off with these lines from other commands. So within those two lines, that group is known as the slides group, and that one's the font group, the paragraph, and the drawing, and so on. And it has them on all the tabs. And then within each group, if they have any extra commands that are not available, or they are available, but, well, they can't squeeze them all into the group, or they're not as popular, they have what's called the expandable dialog box button that when you click on that it'll open up another window so let me come down here and show you click in the text box there and now that becomes available 
So if I'm looking to make some text bold or italics or I want to know what else is available, click on that, it expands, and you get, well, pretty much the same options as you see here, but in addition to that, other options that aren't available here, like the strike through, you know, put a line through the text that you're typing. Maybe it's some sort of sale that you have and you say, okay, retail it was this, put a line through it, and then you give them the real price or the wholesale price or the final price. Let me go ahead and close out of that by clicking cancel. And not every group has extra commands here, but for those that are available, just click on it to expand it and see what it is. And let me go ahead and click off the text box here in a blank area. And then down below that, well, you've got your horizontal and vertical rulers, which you can turn those on or off from the View tab, which we'll go over later on. And then over to the left-hand side, you have your thumbnail preview of all the slides that you have in your presentation versus over to the right-hand side, wherever you have selected over here, is your working area for that slide that you just selected. So I'm working on slide one, and I only got one slide. But if I had a bunch of designs and images, there's a quick preview over here, the thumbnail. And that way I can look at it going, oh yeah, that looks pretty much the same as this one, number three or number four down below. So quick view, you can go ahead and click on that slide to jump right to it. And then over in the working area, make the change on that slide. And then, of course, navigate through the thumbnails here to other slides you want to make changes to. And then down below, you have what's known as the status bar. And over here it says I'm on slide one of one. And, oh, it's in English, United States. That's great. You also have notes, speaker notes, that when you click on it, it opens up down below where you can click and type in notes about the slide. So that way, when you're giving your presentation, if you want to go ahead while you're designing it, say, okay, like slide one here, this is where we do the introduction, and then you add a second slide, you can type in some notes saying, okay, let's do a free handout of some keychains because we're presenting it on keychains. In any case, those are notes for you that you can print off that will guide you through your presentation that you can read or glance at as you're giving it in front of everybody. So it's just for you, and you can go ahead and click on that to collapse it, not see it. Now you've got comments and our different views here. Now these views that you see down below is basically a quick access to those views as you can come up here on the View tab and see those same views, right? Normal, Outline, Slide Sorter. There's Normal. Slide sorter, we don't have the outline here, reading view, but the more popular ones you can jump right to. And of course, to begin your slideshow. And then you've got your zoom feature. So right now, if you want to zoom in on the text or you're working on something that's kind of minute, or you want to zoom out to get a distant view of it, in any case, you can click and zoom out and then zoom in. Oh, that gets huge. And you can also click on the 100% and get more particular without clicking and dragging. You can actually do it numerically by typing it in. Look, I need it to be 99%. Hit enter and, well, there you go, 99%. And then if you want to go back to the default, well, let me get my pointer out of the way, of where it was before, before we started changing our zoom options here. Well, just want it to fit the area here. That's the size of our screen. Go ahead and click on fit slide to current window. There we go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.